Hey guys, I've been asked several times how to populate your tool table when using Mach 3 mill and TTS tool holders, especially when you don't have a granite surface and a height dial gauge. And there's, there's a couple of ways that you can do it, and I'll show you how I do it, and then you can, hopefully it'll help you out. So one thing is, or the main thing is that we need to get the height between where it meets where our, where our TTS tool holder meets the spindle and the bottom of our tool. That is our tool height and that is the measurement that we need to put in our height column in our tool table. I don't worry about anything else. The diameter, you know what the diameter of your tool is, the description of course. So all we need to do is just get the height of our tool. Now why don't, one thing we can do is why not just use the mill DRO to measure our tool. So all you have to do is just get you a some type of block. It can be a one, two, three block. It, it can be a scrap piece of uh, can be a scrap piece of metal. You just want something that you know is a good surfacing square. And all you have to do is make sure that your tool number on your program tab, make sure your tool number is zero. Like so. And then just lower your spindle down. Make sure that the your TTS collet is not hanging below the spindle. Jog your spindle down. So you can slide your just keep checking it, get it just right. Okay, that's pretty good right there. So what I want to do now is I want to set my Z height right there. Okay. And then I want to take my longest tool. Now I don't recommend that you use a drill bit on this even though your drill bit's probably going to be your longest tool. Reason being is that your drill bits, you're probably going to change those out. So my longest tool happens to be a 3 8 inch uh, long 4 flute end mill. So I'm going to put that in there. And then I know the distance between, because we zeroed the distance between the bottom of the spindle and the top of this gauge block, I know what that distance is. So all I want to do is just lower till it's just past it, bump it back up until the gauge bike slides underneath. Like so. Pretty satisfied with that. And then I use the DRO to tell me how tall or how high my tool is. And it happens to be 3.5389. So 
It's a little loud. Let me turn it off. Okay, so my tool height happens to be 3.5389. So I'll go to Configure, Tool Table. Uh, in, input my information for tool number one. And type in 3.54, or excuse me, 3.5389. hit enter hit OK I mean excuse me hit apply and then hit OK okay so now we know the height of tool number one and you can go through each tool and do the same process leave leave the program screen tool number on zero because we've zeroed the spindle out, the bottom of the spindle, and go in and uh, progressively getting shorter and shorter and shorter with your tools and populate your tool table. Now that's one method of doing it. And then after you get done populating your whole tool table, go back with tool number one, put your gauge blocks under there again, set the Z height to zero and then you can go through each tool change the tool number and check zero and make sure each tool is correct that's one way of doing it by using the DRO built-in Mach 3 to give us a pretty good accurate um, measurement on each tool height another method is after you have all that established and say you're running something and a bit breaks uh, the easiest method that I found to do is zero your tool height with that is tool number one so I type in make sure I got tool number one in my tool information I'm going to zero that out Hold on. Let me turn it on. All right, I've got tool number one in there. Okay, that's tool zero. Let's change that to tool number one. Okay, and it's zeroed out. Make sure it's zeroed. And then whatever tool that we happen to have changed and, and damaged, we just put that tool in let's say in our case it's uh, tool number seven which is another a shorter three-eighths inch four fluid in mail so what I want to do is bring this Check it, get it set, okay, it's pretty good right there, alright, so that is minus point five one eight seven. so just get a calculator. This is hard to do, but get a calculator. And then what we want to do is we're going to go up to our tool table. We're going to look at tool number one. And tool number one height is 3.5389. Point five three eight nine, and we want to subtract because it's telling us it's a negative value we want to subtract 0 0.5187 so 
3.5389 minus 0.5187 gives me 3.0202 3.0202 So we want to go to tool number 7 3.0202 Hit apply OK and then we change this to tool number 7 and our DRO for Z should go to 0 if we've done everything correctly which we have and we know that our tool is now at 0 you can also populate your tool table this way as well by just simply getting the height of the first tool and then populating each tool off of that just be mindful that you're doing your adding or subtracting from tool number one tool height. If if you started with the longest tool as tool number one, then all your other values you should be subtracting for each tool from that tool height. But if you happen to have a longer tool, then you will be adding that value to the tool height. So I hope this was helpful information. Those are just a couple of methods that you can use to populate your tool table. If you don't have a tool height gauge and a flat granite plate, those are just a couple of ways I do it. It works good for me. Um, there's probably a whole, at least a dozen ways you can do it, but um, those two methods work really well for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe by clicking the button below. Have a great day, and most importantly, be safe.